Hello. Today we are working on my first capsule wardrobe piece. Don't mind the makeup on my hand. This is a black linen keyhole blouse. I believe from the 40s. It's a reproduction from Etsy. So let's get to it. I made a mock-up yesterday using a black linen dress that I thrifted forever ago and I never wore. And it fit pretty well. I did have a few changes. One, the facing needed to be redrafted because it did not match up with the neck hole. Two, I extended the neck hole up just a little, just by like an eighth of an inch. And then thirdly, I also moved the dart down by about one inch to account for my bust. Uh, this is actually supposed to be for a 34 inch bust. I'm 38 inches. I learned recently that sometimes you can just move the dart down and it'll give you more ease rather than having to do a full bust adjustment. So if you don't have a ton of difference to go, I recommend trying that. In this case, it worked for me. All right, so now I have my pattern updated and I'm going to start laying out my linen and I will cut it out. So I've got this beautiful, actually it's a linen rayon blend from Mood, and I'll be using this today. It's, it's a little sheer, um, but it's black and I think it's gonna be fine when it's worn. So, we got everything cut out. That only took a few minutes. We're gonna start with the darts and the tucks as always. But actually, before we do that, I'm gonna stay stitch around the neck hole. I'm actually gonna be kind of a rebel today and I'm not really following the instructions on the pattern very much. I'm not even sure if it tells you to stay stitch, but I'm telling you to stay stitch, so do it. <laughs> so check this out. I'm gonna sew around this curve. I'm gonna go slow. And I'm gonna let the feed dogs, the part underneath that moves the fabric, do all the work. And the way I make sure that I still have the right seam allowance is to always compare right here, parallel to the needle. You don't wanna start using this part as your guide because as you go around that curve, this part right here is always gonna be wider than this part. Sorry, that was out of focus the whole time. <laughs> I'm just moving to pivot the fabric. I'm not actually gonna pick my foot up. Okay, that looks like a really nice curve. No points. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can really see how I let the machine do the work around this curve. You can really see on this black fabric, but it's a really nice smooth curve. There's no corners anywhere. And that's what I always aim for if I ever have a curved piece, neckline, collar, etc. Next, I am going to sew the darts and the tucks. Um, so as I sew the dart, when I get to the, the tip, I put my stitch length down to one. And then I pivot right at the last second and sew just a, a few stitches almost parallel to this fold right here. And that keeps you from having the point sticking out of the dart. And then don't back stitch, leave some tails, some thread tails, and then tie this off with the square knot. Left over right and eh, right over left. Done. I am gonna go press these towards the center. So I'll be right back. So I've got my my facing on top of my shirt here. 
and they're right sides together. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and sew all the way around here. All right, and that is all sewn on there. So what I'm gonna do is clip the seam allowances in these corners here, there, there, and then this curved part. And then I'm gonna turn it inside out, press it, and then top stitch. So I just pressed the facing inward and got a nice clean edge here. So I'm gonna just top stitch now. When I top stitch, I like to go up to stitch length of three instead of 2.5. Now I'm going to sew the ties. So around the perimeter, leaving up here open so I can turn them. So now what I'm gonna do, this is how I get my corners to be so pointy. I'm gonna fold the seam allowance down along that seam line, and then I'm gonna fold the other side over. Folded like so, see one seam allowance is folded over the other. And then we're gonna turn. 99% of the time I don't clip my corners because I just find that I can't get a really crisp corner. But if I do the folding thing and then turn it inside out and then that fold kind of folds in on itself, it does a nice crisp corner. I'll show you. All right, and then I take my tweezers and I drop them down inside there. And then I just feel for the corners and I just kind of start pinching and manipulating. It's a little fiddly, but you know what? In the long run, your corners are gonna be a lot pointier and you're not gonna run risk of having your threads start to poke out over time. Now, what I'm going to do is sew bias binding. Wow, that's sheer. <laughs> All the way around the perimeter of the shirt. Then I'm going to leave the ends here where it ties. I'm just, I'm not gonna worry about tapering these all fancy or anything because the ties will be attached here. Anyway, you'll see. So all the bias binding and I just pressed it flat on the right side. So now what I'm gonna do is fold, this is double fold bias binding. I'm gonna fold this over once and then fold it over again. And then I'm going to hand stitch little teeny tiny stitches all the way around.
Alrighty, that's it. I hope you enjoyed. I'm very, very happy with this fabric choice. It's pretty much exactly how I pictured. It's got a nice, a nice drape, a little bit of structure to it. It's not too flimsy, but it, it feels still very wearable and very, very lightweight for my hot Florida weather. This pattern, I did just make a couple of really small adjustments, as I mentioned before. I moved the back neckline down about one eighth of an inch. And then I also moved the darts down about an inch, but I think I would move them down even another half inch if I was to make this again. I did also have to redraft the facing because when I overlaid the facing on top of the neckline, it was quite a bit off. So it's always a good idea to compare your facings to your actual garment pattern before you cut anything out and start sewing. If you'd like to see the rest of my uh, wardrobe fleshing out, then make sure you subscribe. And you can follow me on Instagram. I'm at Liz Von Villas. My Facebook group is Vintage Sewing with Liz. And I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.